One of the most famous studies into human obedience was conducted by Stanley Milgram in 1963 at Yale University. It became famous not only for its results, but mainly because of its highly unethical procedure. Being in the early 60s, World War II was still fresh in everyone's mind, and one of their burning questions was, were the Nazis just evil and able to commit these horrific acts, or are good old Americans capable of this too? To test this, Milgram put out adverts in the local New Haven newspapers looking for males aged between 20 and 50 years old, even offering the participants $4.50 for just showing up. That's about $35 in today's money, or £26 in civilised money. The advert only said that they would be taking part in an experiment about learning behaviours. 40 men signed up, all typically working class normal Americans, as more well off people wouldn't have signed up for just 35 quid. They brought the first participant into the waiting room, with one other guy already waiting. They told the participant that the other guy was also a participant, but he was actually just an actor and in on the experiment. They then drew straws to see who would be the learner and who would be the teacher. But again, this was fake as they rigged it so the real participant would always be the teacher, as the actor always knew which side the short straw was. The experimenter who wore a lab coat explained that the teacher would test the learner's memory in a simple word pairs test. When the learner answered incorrectly, he would then be asked to give him an electric shock. They all went into the learner's room and the real participant watched the learner getting strapped into the electric chair with electrodes being attached to his body. They also gave the real participant a 45 volt shock just to further prove to them that it was real. But of course in reality the learner was never going to be shocked. They were then taken into a room by themselves where they could not see the participant. They could only hear them through a loudspeaker. In front of them was a generator with labelled switches from 15 volts to 450 volts and this went up in 15 volt increments. So for each wrong answer the actor gave, the participant had to press the switch to give them electric shock. The learner's answers started out quite well, but they soon kept getting wrong answers, meaning the actor would be zapped more each time. All his responses were recording, so they were kept the same for each participant. At 75 volts, they would grunt and sound like they were in pain. At 120 volts, he would protest, saying things like, hey, this really hurts. At 150 volts, he would then sound very distressed and would be asking to be let out. At 270 volts, the learner would now be screaming in agony. And finally, after 340 volts, he would fall silent. If the participant did not obey and flick the switch, the experimenter used four prods to make them carry on. Prod one was please continue, then the experiment requires you to continue. It's absolutely essential that you continue. You have no other choice but to continue. If the first didn't work, they'd move on to the next and so forth. If they still refused after these prods, then the experiment was ended and the participant was informed that it was all faked. Milgram predicted that only one of the participants were going to go to the maximum of 450 volts, which is more than enough to kill a man. He was shocked to find out that 26 of the 40 participants went to 450 volts. 65% of people had heard them screaming in agony and even after the 23rd shock where they fell silence, they continued to shock what would have been a corpse seven more times. This however did take its toll on them. Some of them were showing extreme stress, bad sweating, trembling, stuttering and nervous laughter. It wasn't easy for them. Three of them even had full-blown uncontrollable panic attacks. They are humans after all. But if they are human, why did they continue to shock what would have been a corpse? You may think to yourself, at least 14 people didn't go to 450 volts. But all of the participants administered at least a 300 volt shock. In fact, only 5 participants stopped at that point, so the learner had already been screaming in agony for the last 2 incorrect answers and previously begged to be let out. 100% of the participants had tortured a man nearly to death. Milgram came to the conclusion that these inhumane acts are far more easily committed than once thought. It was likely down to the participants seeing all of these authoritative signs such as the prestigious university which was an alien place for these working class ordinary men. They went into an official looking lab with an instructor wearing a lab coat and telling him his orders. This instilled in them that they were not in control here, the lab coats were. It's much easier just to disassociate from your actions and let authoritative figures take responsibility. So the participants had a feeling that they were just agents of another's will. I'm sure while you sit here watching this video, there are many of you who still think that you wouldn't actually kill someone because you were told to. 
People who feel this way are the ones you need to watch. It's important to check yourself and your actions as it took these men one day to be convinced to murder someone and 29 participants had hypothetically killed a man that day. That's 72.5% of the participants. In 1933, the Nazis came to power after winning 43.91% of the votes. But in 1933, there wasn't the death camps, there wasn't the war, and it began unifying against the people's pests, or what they were told to be pests, and it continued because it's what humans do. We do what we're told. Relating to this today, and to America, there seems to be a real divide or rivalry that is being exploited by those in authority positions. Think about that next time you don't support a business that supports the Republicans, or you avoid shops with a BLM poster. The services or products they provide do not differ. Think about why you're not visiting that business and who is really wanting you to act this way. If you have the time, please do post counterpoints and criticisms in the comments.